Welcome. Welcome to my talk, a quick introduction to AWS Lambda. Um, my name is Oliver Geiser. I'm from a German company named Avato, which is part of the Bertelsmann Group. I highly appreciate that you spent your lunch time, and so I hope you enjoy. AWS Lambda is one of three compute options of the AWS um, uh, cloud service. Um, the most popular one is, uh, and the oldest one is the EC2, uh, which gives you uh, virtual machines. You have ECS, not so new uh, anymore, since uh, uh, one year, roughly. It's the EC2 container service, which gives you Docker container execution. And then we have um, the Lambda platform, which gives you function execution. So the difference between the first two and uh, Lambda is that in the case of EC2 and ECS, you have a complete virtual machine or a container running on the virtual machine. And in Lambda, you have a um, managed execution environment. So you can compare this to a managed application server, but without any language dependencies. So in a rough, quick overview, you upload your code, you configure triggers, um, so-called event sources, which emits uh, events, and then Lambda invokes your code with the data from this event. And um, the interesting point from a business point of view is that you pay per invocation. So if um, you compare this to EC2, uh, you pay for the running hour, independent if your application is doing something or not. In the case of Lambda, you only pay for the duration of your invocation. Okay, upload your code. What kind of code? Thank you. Um, currently, there are three supported language runtimes. It's a Node, it's Java 8, it's uh, Python. Uh, Python is since uh, last month. Uh, there was a big uh, reinvent um, conference um, from uh, the uh, conference from uh, Amazon in the United States, and this is always a time of a uh, lot of announcements. And there was the time they announced uh, Python support, but in the upcoming months, I assume there will be additional languages supported, like for example Go language or Ruby um, language. The execution environment is managed, but nevertheless, you are not restricted in the way um, that there are whitelists or blacklists, um, like in the early days of the Google uh, Cloud Platform. Um, you have an Amazon uh, Linux environment. Uh, your code has complete control. You can create threads, processes, uh, access native code, um, create sockets, file systems, and so on. So um, complete com uh, control over the environment. Only exception, you do not have root access. And uh, there's a requirement for your code from the semantics point of view. Your code should be stateless. Because the uh, environment is not persistent, that is, uh, you can't assume that between invocations you execute in the same environment. Um, the platform can decide that you, uh, the next invocation will happen on a other instance. Then, uh, talking about the programming model. Um, of course, there are different languages supported, and every language has their own syntax, uh, semantics, and so on. But uh, there are similar concepts in all these uh, languages. Um, your function handler, the actual code which gets executed, should be stateless. You get the event data as a parameter to a function in Node.js or to a method in uh, Java. Um, you have context support, for example, to check um, timeout um, uh, values or something like this. And you, can, uh, you have logging support, all your log uh, logs are written to the CloudWatch uh, log service. You package up your uh, code into zip files um, with all required uh, libraries, and then you upload directly to Lambda, or you um, upload to S3 and uh, point Lambda to the uh, S3 bucket. So, invocation types. There are two types um, in which, or two ways in which your um, function can get invoked. One is the so called event type, which is an asynchronous um, invocation. It's one way, no response. 
um, and you have the typical request response like you um, are familiar with uh, REST interfaces or something like this. So your code gets executed and you uh, provide a, a result and um, this is a synchronous invocation. Um, besides of the invocation types, there's a question of integration model to this so-called event sources. This is a ra the rather um, um, a general concept. So um, in some cases, um, Lambda pulls the event source. So there's a loop going on inside of Lambda, and uh, this is polling on the, on the event source, or the event source has special uh, Lambda support in it and um, invokes uh, Lambda um, directly. So to make this more uh, concrete, two examples, one for the pull uh, model, the um, Kinesis, um, think uh, about Kinesis uh, roughly as a Kafka queue. Um, I will talk about uh, Kinesis tomorrow in the cookie. Um, and uh, Lambda pulls this, this queue, and every time there's new data in it, it invokes um, the, uh, the Lambda function. So um, you only pay if there's data available, then there's a, um, a looping going on, I think 200 milliseconds currently, and uh, then um, the function gets executed. There's another example for the push, um, and uh, this is um, S3. Um, uh, S3 has direct support uh, for um, a Lambda, and uh, you can configure S3 to invoke a Lambda function if something happens uh, inside of S3. For example, someone uh, uploads a file to a um, S3 bucket, and th then you can react to this in your Lambda function. Here I have uh, prepared an overview slide. Um, about um, all the AWS services which are currently um, uh, integrated uh, with Lambda. And um, uh, you find um, the services on the left. And then it's uh, marked if this is a push or a pull um, uh, model integration, or, and if the um, a call is um, event-based, one based, just informing the function, um, uh, the, the, the Lambda function that something has happened, or is a, if it's a request response, so you can um, uh, yeah, modify the behavior of the, of the calling service. Okay, then this is everything what is built in. Um, from, from the side of Amazon, but what about your code? So, on-demand invocation. Um, you can, of course, call the Lambda API directly from uh, your code, um, your backend code, or your mobile um, uh, apps. And there's also support inside the mobile SDK. And um, uh, there's special support inside the, in auch one of the newer services, AWS API Gateway, which um, the sole purpose is to receive REST calls and um, uh, transfer this maps this to uh, Lambda function. And um, also rather new is um, the option to uh, use uh, scheduled invocation, so you can um, uh, configure Lambda to configure um, to, to, to execute your code every five minutes or um, every hour or something like this, and um, there's con expression support too. Also built in is um, monitoring. So you get uh, the metrics, um, how often your code gets executed, uh, how long is the duration, everything is uh, stored inside of uh, CloudWatch. The AWS uh, monitoring service, and um, like uh, explained before, also all your um, logs uh, are um, stored inside of CloudWatch logs. Okay, this is um, the, the idea of Lambda is to be the glue code uh, uh, between um, a processing uh, pipeline. To give you an example. Um, uh, consider the use case of um, um, uh, resizing images um, for different purposes, 
like for example, um, you, uh, your application uploads um, a photo to an S3 bucket, and then you can have a Lambda function which gets triggered every time the um, uh, photo is uploaded, and then it calls uh, image resizing uh, functionality. You can code, uh, use native code, which is running on Linux, um, and um, uh, resize the image, store it back to, to S3 or wherever it uh, fits, and um, you have no server to manage for this use case. Um, the scaling is um, uh, completely um, managed, um, and if you have one image uploaded um, per day, or if you have thousands of images uploaded per second, uh, it's um, uh, completely managed, and uh, the scaling and the number of invocations is um, uh, managed by the demand which is triggered by the uh, number of uploads to your um, S3 bucket. So, um, some miscellaneous remarks at the end. Um, behind the scenes there's a container model. And this is not documented. So, so if this Linux, you have something in between um, uh, Amazon calls this a container, and this container is managed, and um, there is something uh, going on uh, of freezing and thawing. This is not really um, documented, but you can find some blog posts and some support um, uh, um, information in the forums. Um, and this means that um, um, Amazon behind the scenes manages the process of um, putting the number of Lambda functions to a big cluster of EC2 instances, and they do this maybe with some kind of, of, of uh, container in, in isolation or some um, homegrown uh, technology. Um, this is not documented, but you can um, uh, notice the effect of this, because after roughly five minutes, the, your first um, invocation is a a little bit slower than uh, the remaining ones. And this also brings us to the topics of uh, cold startup times, uh, which is uh, language independent. And the uh, keynote, Mark Reynolds, mentions the uh, startup time of, a of, of, of Java virtual machine. So there needs to be a time where this uh, Java virtual machine is initialized, or the class loader gets initialized, and um, uh, your class is loaded. And um, uh, this is much slower than, for example, Node.js. Um, Amazon is working on this, and in the past uh, months um, there was some progress, but it's still um, not noticeable, and um, this has a cost impact. A minor one, but it has a one. So, um, a, a conclusion. What are the uh, pros for this um, setup? It's fully uh, managed. You do not uh, care about uh, server management, uh, cluster management, and so on. It's 24-7 without um, any ops intervention. It's auto-scaling. Um, you pay per invocation. Um, so this is, uh, um, uh, this is a model. And um, the, on the uh, contra side, of course, this is completely proprietary um, Amazon stuff. It's not an EJB model or container model from the Java world or something like this, um, but rather specific interfaces. Um, but the vendor lock-in, for my um, opinion, is not very hard because um, it's just a calling interface and you can uh, migrate um, such kind of architecture to a self-managed um, uh, cluster rather easily. And the um, uh, second thing to uh, remember is be aware of the different cost model. Um, this is um, a topic of its own to calculate um, the number of requests and the number of used memory, which is aligned to the cost model, and the number of uh, milliseconds, um, the uh, unit of um, payment is, uh, or the unit of cost is, um, is 100 millisecond, millisecond um, execution time. So, this is uh, my final slide. So, um, my time is up. Thank you, and if you have any further questions, I would be happy to answer this um, in front of the room or wherever we meet. Thank you. <laughs>